Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, a banned auto swordfish. This one features a Banshee flywheel cage, wheels, and motors setup by Band Blasters. I'll put a link in the description box below. It also has a worker full auto kit with a few little tweaks. This one now has a full metal gear gearbox using a Flywheel the World Merlin motor and a hybrid pusher for firing short darts. This setup is now giving me 200 FPS at 12 darts per second. Today I'll show you how I put this one together, wired it all up, show you some numbers over the chronograph and do an accuracy test, and I'll also include a bit of footage from a recent Brisbane area Nerf group event as a special treat. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, so first of all, here are the parts that we're going to use for the pusher mechanism, wire up switches uh, and so on. These are the parts that come with the worker full auto kit. There's a few little things that I'll be doing a bit differently from the instructions that I'll, I'll step through. First of all, this piece is a voltage adjuster where you can use this little dial here to, to change the input voltage of 12 volts or so for your 3S LiPo to some lower voltage. The idea is it powers the pusher motor and you can adjust the speed by reducing the voltage going to that and so adjust your rate of fire. Uh, I don't care about that, so that's not gonna be used. The next thing is the pusher. So this is a push that comes with the kit and it fits into the shell just in place of the original manual pusher. So it moves back and forth like so, which is fine for long darts. Well, short darts, of course, it's not actually gonna push the dart into the flywheels. So I've got this extended pusher and that fits like so. And you can see this piece here sits just at the back of short darts and when it moves, and that dart goes into the flywheels. Now I've previously had poor results with this type of extended pusher. So it's hybrid because it can push long darts with this part, short darts with this part. In the past I found sometimes the pusher would slip up and so go over the top of a dart and not push them correctly into the flywheels. I don't think that's gonna be a problem here because this piece of plastic at the top of the magwell will prevent this part from going any further upwards. So as long as that's in place, we shouldn't ever have a, a situation where this part can slip up above top of the next dart. So that should be right to go exactly as it is. Another thing to notice is the trigger that comes with the full auto kit is slightly different to the original trigger. They're essentially the same shape and size. The original one has these little bits cut out, which is cool, but there is a difference down the bottom here. Now in the original configuration, this piece at the bottom here doesn't touch the rev trigger until it's all the way back. However, the one that comes with the kit, you'll see sits right against this front piece here. So you can't move it, firstly because of this lock here, but secondly, if you do try to move it without that lock, you'll see it pushes the rev trigger back, which will activate a switch that sits at the back there. So I'm going to not use the one that comes with the kit, but instead use the original trigger, again with those little cutouts. So I can pull the trigger and fire the blaster without needing to touch this rev trigger here. Also with the kit, you get a spring for the pusher that can sit there. There's this return spring that goes onto the pusher and that's what keeps the pusher retracted when the motor isn't spinning. So after firing a dart, this spring will pull it back to the neutral position automatically. So other parts we get with the kit are a MOSFET kit. So MOSFET, a resistor and a diode. And what that allows us to do is have a higher current circuit going to the flywheels up the front here to ensure that the current running through these switches is only as much as the pusher motor draws. You'll notice there are four switches that come with the kit which is handy. Normally we only need three, one for the rev trigger, one for the firing trigger, and one for the cycle control. With this fourth one, I'm actually gonna use that to power a voltmeter. So this voltmeter I'll just glue on the inside of the shell, maybe there. So that'll be visible on the outside through the shell. And I'm gonna hook that up to a switch at the bottom here so that the normal rev trigger isn't used for firing, will activate the voltmeter. If I want to check my LiPo's voltage, instead of having the rev switch there, I'm going to mount it at the front here, giving me a two-stage trigger with switches forward and back. So the start of the trigger pull will activate the flywheels through the front switch, and the rear switch will activate the pusher motor. The other thing I'm going to do is replace this entire assembly with a blue gearbox. 
Now, this one has metal gears on the inside. The plastic is cheaper. It has plastic gears, which can wear over time. But otherwise, the dimensions are pretty much identical. So I'm just going to swap this cog onto this axle, and then that can just essentially replace this piece entirely. You can even feel the difference in weight. The blue one is a bit heavier than the yellow one, just due to the metal gears versus plastic. The other thing I'm going to do is use a Fang revamp motor as the pusher. This motor I'm going to pull out. I'll just unscrew this plastic casing, pull the motor out, and replace it with a Fang revamp. I'll need to do a little bit of shell cutting just here. For the tabs of the motor otherwise it's just a straight swap out of one 130 size motor for another okay so it shouldn't be too complicated at all to build i can just go ahead and make a start on wiring this up in the battery tray of course i'll need to as usual pull out these terminals and cut away this molding and a bit at the top here just to make room for my lipo otherwise the shape of the shell on the inside here is perfectly designed for these switches all the screw holes line up perfectly so uh, this will be a pretty straightforward build Okay, this is coming along nicely now. I finished wiring up everything around the pusher mechanism. So here you can see one, two, three, four switches in place. Just recapping, this is the rev trigger now. We're not using this one down here. And this will be activated when I begin pulling the trigger. There'll be a spring here holding this closed at rest. But the rest is as per normal when the trigger then hits the firing trigger that starts the motor. Up here we've got the cycle control switch, which stops the pusher in the fully retracted position when the trigger is released. And now down here, which is usually the rev trigger, that's now connected when you press the switch to this voltmeter up here, which will just sit on the inside of the shell and shine through to the outside. So the battery positive is wired to the normally closed tab of the rev trigger. And I've also run a wire from that same tab up to the normally closed tab of the cycle control switch so that's also getting battery positive all the time the common tab of this rev trigger goes to the normally open tab of the firing trigger and it also goes to the signal wire for the mosfet which i haven't wired up yet so that means that the firing trigger only gets power when the rev trigger is activated which under normal circumstances should always be the case but if something were to happen like this switch busted and the flywheels weren't spinning it would ensure that the firing trigger couldn't run the pusher motor and risk pushing a dart into stalled flywheels. So that's the normally open tab of the firing trigger. Common goes to the motor, normally closed, runs from the common tab of the cycle control. As mentioned, the normally closed tab of the cycle control switch gets battery positive at all times, which means as long as the pusher is forward, it'll always have power to return. And the normally open tab goes to battery negative, meaning that as soon as the pusher does return, as long as the motor doesn't have power from the firing trigger, it will then be connected to the negative battery terminal and break the pusher motor with the pusher fully retracted. So here's how that looks on 2S. And even on 3S. Always any at the back. Okay, so that's all working nicely. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in here, there's the Fang revamp motor that I swapped over the stock motor for. I did that for a few reasons. Durability, rate of fire, better torque, so snappier response with this pusher motor. However, that did have some costs. The main one being that the yellowed gearbox that comes with the kit has a gear ratio of 1 to 90, whereas the blue ones have a ratio of 1 to 48. That means it's just about twice as slow for the same number of motor revolutions compared to the yellow one. So that's just the cost of having metal gears. The gearing ratio is different, and so it's slower at the price of durability. And a point on durability... With the worker kit, you actually get a couple of spare cogs that attach to the motor directly here. So it's almost like they know that this cog is going to wear out being plastic. So you could see the rate of fire. Even on 3S, it wasn't a particularly high. On 2S, it was even lower. So what I think I'll do is I've got some Flywheel of the World Merlin motors and a spare gearbox. So I'm actually going to swap this one over just the same. And with the higher RPM of the Merlin motors, I'll have gearboxes with two different rates of fire that I can uh, play around with. The only thing is to swap over this cog here. But otherwise, the wiring of this was not particularly difficult. You got a bit of cable management to make sure all the wires are out of the way uh, and underneath things and don't impede the movement of this pusher. That's the only thing to, to look out for. But uh, otherwise, this part of the blaster is done now. 
Okay, we're just about done now. You'll see I've got my Banshee set up, cage wheels and motors from Band Blasters. Very exciting to uh, receive this one the other day. So that's all wired up through the MOSFET to the firing trigger. That's activated as soon as I pull the trigger. Um, I did have to do a bit of shell modification around here. So the main thing is cutting around these three screw posts. So there's supports sort of on two or three or four sides of each of those that I had to cut down so that the cage would sit all the way down. Uh, it rests against this piece and this inside piece here. So that's kind of the level that you need to go for. One thing I did have to do, apologies to Adam from Band Blasters, I had to chop a hole in the uh, front of the dart guide piece here for this tip of the extended pusher to fit in. I could have cut that short instead. I decided not to. I decided to, uh, to take the Dremel to this dart guide, but uh, that's just one little thing I had to do for the extended pusher. But otherwise, it's wired up through the MOSFET. My wiring here is a bit simpler, so that in the battery tray now, I've only got one positive and one negative wire to wire up to my LiPo connector. A few cosmetic things I've done. I replaced the orange uh, front muzzle piece with this clear one, because I think that looks pretty cool. And as I tighten that down, you can see that it's neatly aligned. Okay, and so I can put this together. I've just got a few screws front and back, top and bottom to hold this in place. As usual, I'm using my M2.6 hex head screws or socket cap screws. Really handy for blasters that you know you're going to be opening and closing quite a few times. As you saw with the flywheel cage, also easier to tighten up screws more compared to Phillips head screws. Okay, so let's connect this up and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see how this goes. First of all, the voltmeter. See, that's working nicely. Rev trigger. And then with the pusher motor. Right, next question, how does it look putting a few darts through? And of course, with the hybrid pusher, I should be able to fire full lengths just as well. Yep, that's pretty nice. I basically never use full length darts, but I guess it's good to know that if I am out on the field and I need to borrow a mag from somebody, uh, if I've run out, then uh, and pulling out the Talon adapter and slotting in a full-length magazine uh, is an option for me. All right, so last thing to do is just wire up this uh, XT30 connector to the ends here, and then this one's ready to go. Okay, let's get some numbers from the Banshee Swordfish now. So 3S LiPo, going with Worker Red Gen 2s. Just going to go full auto so we get the FPS as well as DPS. Okay, maximum 200.7, minimum 189.5, average 192.7. That is hot. And now out of interest, I've stuck a 2S LIHV, that's a high voltage LiPo, slightly higher than a regular 2S. So we'll see how this goes with FPS, see if it brings it down to maybe 150 FPS or so. Okay, we had one outlier, 160, uh, lowest 143, average 148.9. So that's actually really good for super stock events. Okay, here we are 50 feet from the target as usual. So Banshee Cage is in place and running on a 3S LiPo. 
which I just clocked at 190 plus FPS, so really happy with those numbers. Worker Red Gen 2s to start, got 18 in two mags. I'll try some single shots initially and then a few burst, and then we'll just dump a mag for fun. That was a bullseye. Took me a couple of shots to get my aim in. I was going a bit left initially, but uh, once I kind of sighted it, uh, those shots were uh, bang on target. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of bullseyes there. So with those FPS numbers and that accuracy, I could not be happier with the performance of this blaster. Band Blaster's Banshee Cage is really delivering the goods. Now here's some footage from the Brisbane Area Nerf That's Group's Archie, August Archie. Superstock event. Hey, this game mode was kill confirmed, where players tag must stand still until okay. revived by a teammate or eliminated by an enemy with a hand tag. That's it. Down on the leg. Brook on the leg. This event had a 150 FPS cap, so I was experimenting using a worker adjustable string scar twisted to about 60 degrees to bring the FPS down within this limit. I found that did the job reducing FPS, but it wasn't great for accuracy producing whirlybirds now and then. I'll definitely stick to using a 2S LiPo for future Superstock events. Out, out. Hit. So there you have it, 200 FPS, 12 darts per second, great performance, great accuracy, no wonder this thing's banned. Please leave any questions or comments below, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.